Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about Opuntia humifusa, raff raff, otherwise known as the Eastern Prickly Pear Cactus or Devil's Tongue. Now for the sake of today's video, we're just going to be referring to it as Prickly Pear. Now Prickly Pear is a perennial succulent plant that grows to be about 10 centimeters tall. And while it's growing, it forms in dense clumps or it forms in mats along the ground. Now shockingly, Prickly Pear is known to be quite drought resistant. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of prickly pear, we can see that it is native to the central and eastern United States. However, it isn't terribly aggressive, but it can still have moments where it is. If you're looking to add prickly pear to your landscape, it grows in hardiness zones 4 through 9. When it comes to prickly pear's habitat, it can typically be found in open dry areas like prairies, deserts, and woodlands. It prefers sandy or loamy soils and is able to tolerate low nutrient acidic soils as well as alkaline soils. You may also be able to spot this species in places like rocky glades, on cliffs, and in dunes. Now if we turn our attention to the stem of the cactus, we'll see that we have pads, which are the segments of our stem. These pads are glossy and green in color. The pads are green because they're actually photosynthesizing and they act as a leaf. Additionally, during the winter time, the prickly pear pads shrivel up and they are able to survive this cold weather due to antifreeze chemicals that are in their cells. Okay, now let's zoom in a bit on those orange dots on the cactus, which are called areoles. Each areole has a bunch of tiny hair-like barbs that are called glochids, as well as the occasional spine, which is the large thorn. Now, not every areole will have a spine. Once a prickly pear is at least two years old, it will begin to bloom, which occurs May to July, and they produce large yellow perfect flowers with many petals, stamen, and a single pistil. These flowers are typically yellow, but to the east of the Appalachian Mountains and on dunes, oftentimes the center of the flower will be red to orange in color. These flowers are pollinated by insects, the most common being bees. Now about two to three months after pollination takes place, a berry will form and it will go from green then to red in color. Inside the berry, there are flat disc-shaped seeds. The seeds are the primary mode of reproduction for prickly pear, although this species can reproduce by pads breaking off. Small mammals and birds will poop out the seeds after eating the fruits, which leads to a higher germination rate than if the seeds were not consumed at all. Lastly, here's a photo of some cactus bugs, which are an insect that feeds on prickly pear cacti. A sign that they've been feeding on the cacti are those little yellow circles. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the prickly pear cactus, otherwise known as Opuntia humifusa with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.